I'm Mr. Richmond. This is your Integrated Math 2, Unit 9.2, Lesson Summary. In Unit 9.2, we're continuing our study of circles. Uh, we're going to start to introduce you to arcs uh, a little bit more in depth than we did in 9.1 and start talking about um, how to calculate the degree measures of arcs and the angles that create them. So let's start off with a little bit of the vocab we need to know for this section. The degree measure of a minor arc, that's the first thing we're going to start trying to do, is find the degree measure of a minor arc. Um, and it is always the same as the measure of its central angle. So before I, I do any more of that, let me kind of explain why that is. So the amount of degrees in a circle is always 360. Okay, we've learned that 180 is a straight line. So from here to here would be 180. And if I continue again, I have another 180. So the complete degrees around a circle is always 360. Um, for that reason, if I did a quarter of a circle, that would be 90 degrees. Another quarter of a circle, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, etc. And so when we talk about degree measure of arcs, we're talking about what basically what degree amount of the full 360 that arc consists of. And so the degree measure of arcs is always equal to its central angle. So this arc here is 90 degrees. It represents one-fourth of the full circumference of the circle, etc. And so you can always find the degree measure of an arc just by measuring its central angle as long as you're going to the center of the circle. It will always be equal to that. Okay, so I want to start by showing you why that is. Adjacent arcs are any two arcs sharing a common endpoint. Any two arcs sharing a common endpoint. So for example, my diagram here, AB is an arc, BC is an arc, they both share B, so AB and BC are examples of adjacent arcs. The arc addition postulate, similar to other um, addition postulates we've learned in this class, the segment addition postulate, the angle addition postulate, if you have two adjacent angles, you can add them together. If you have two adjacent segments, you can add them together. Now if you have two adjacent arcs, you can add them together. So arc AB plus arc BC should equal that full arc AC. It's kind of another one of our common sense ones, hence the reason it's a postulate and is accepted without any sort of proof. Now some special arcs. We have something called an intercepted arc. Um, this is an important one to know. An intercepted arc is a portion of the circumference of the circle located on the interior of an angle whose endpoints lie on the side uh, of the angle. Okay, that's an intercepted arc. You'll see that a little bit uh, more in detail in a second. The inscribed angle theorem, inscribed angle theorem, says that the measure of an inscribed angle is equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc. Inscribed angles. So let me explain what an inscribed angle is. So we have this same diagram. We know that these are 90, etc. Well, an inscribed angle now goes from two points on the circle. Okay, and rather than going to say the vertex, it goes all the way through to the other side of the circle. Okay, so this would be my inscribed angle. This is my central angle. Okay, and because of the nature of this, the inscribed angle actually always equals half the degree measure of the arc. So my inscribed angle here would be 45 degrees. One way I can kind of show that to you that that's always true is by again kind of drawing them in quarters there, and it's going to be really hard to see because I'm going to overlap some here. Um, but if I was to turn each of these into inscribed angles, and you start to draw every single one that you can, you're going to see that no matter how I do that, it's always going to be half. Okay? And I believe there's a problem in the book where they kind of let you explore that a little more in detail. So you don't have to go through the book to follow that fully and kind of discover that. But ultimately, to summarize what you would have learned from that, the measure of the inscribed angle in a circle is always equal to one half the measure of its intercepted arc. Okay? Last theorem we'll kind of uh, look at in 9.2 is the parallel lines congruent arcs theorem. That states that parallel lines intercept congruent arcs on a circle. Parallel lines intercept congruent arcs on a circle. We'll look at this diagram here to kind of show that, and I'll show you why. 
Um, there is a proof you can do in the book that explains why that's always the case, and I'll show that in a second. So for now, what I'd like to do is just kind of take a look at two different circle diagrams, try to find some arc measures, some angle measures, make sure you understand the relationship between these. Um, the big, big thing to take away from this, I think, to be most successful is that central angles equal the same as their arc. Okay, the arc uh, formed by a central angle, they're exactly the same, whereas an inscribed is half. And common sense-wise, you can kind of see that whenever you do these uh, diagrams. And so. This is a tough, tough chapter to try to memorize everything. It really is. There's so many theorems, so many rules here. So kind of use common sense as your best friend. Okay? You kind of see that angle. You can see what it roughly is. You can even measure out of the protractor. I'm going to say that's you know, roughly 60 degrees. Well, as long as I remember that one rule, I know that this is 60 degrees. And if I create an inscribed angle out of that, you can see that this angle measure is significantly smaller. Um, and it's, it's actually half. And measuring out the protractor kind of verifies it. So this is, again, one of those tests where they can give you diagrams, they can do all that and ask these questions, but it's hard for them to not make it to scale. So if you can take a protractor of that thing, you can find that relationship yourself and get answers. Okay, So keep that in, in mind with this stuff. So let's start by finding the measure of arc AB. Arc AB is right here. It is formed by the central angle AOB. Angle AOB is 50 degrees, and the measure of a central angle is always equal to its arc, so that should be exactly the same, 50 degrees. Things to keep in mind, if you do happen to find all the arcs in the problem, they should always add up to 360, the total amount of degrees in a circle. Now let's take a look at arc BC, okay? Our BC is going to require me to kind of work backwards. I know that an inscribed angle is half its arc measure. So the inscribed an angle in this problem is 40. It should be half its arc measure. So if it's half its arc measure, that means the arc is double the angle. So I know that arc BC must be 80 degrees. So you just need to be able to work with those inscribed angles both directions. Double it or half it depending on the direction you're going. Okay? So that makes arc BC, 80 degrees. Now they're asking me to find the measure of arc AC. Here's where I can start to implement my arc addition postulate. Arc AB and arc BC make arc AC, so I can actually just add arc AB and arc BC together to get 50 degrees plus 80 degrees, meaning that that full arc is 130 degrees. Now we can also work the other way. I can give you arcs, have you find arcs, and try to find angles. So let's change it up, try to find the measure of angle WOA. Okay, this angle here is formed. Now, based on the information I have, you might be at a kind of a loss, like how do I get there, basically what I have. But remember, diameters are always half a circle. And they do give you a diameter here. The chord WB passes through the center of the circle. So I know that any arc made by a diameter has to be equal to the central angle. The central angle is a flat line, which means this whole arc, WAB, has to equal 180. Arc WAB has to equal 180. So arc WOA plus arc AB has to equal that. And so I can set up segment addition postulates to help me. Um, see, I guess I can write it real, real quick right here. So I can say arc WAB, which is the whole thing, equals arc WA plus arc AB. And arc WAB we know is 180 degrees. So I get 180 degrees equals arc WA, which I don't know plus arc AB, oops, and I'm going to plug AB in because I know that is 50 degrees. And so by looking at it this way now, you can see that all I have to do is subtract 50 and get that dark arc WA is 30 degrees. But again, at this point in the class, I would assume that you guys can start to do some of this stuff in your head and kind of get that. This is 180 degrees, so if this is 50, arc WA must be 130. And remember, O W A is a central angle, so it is always directly equal to its arc measure or vice versa. So arc or angle W O A has to be 
130 degrees. Okay? Other ways to get that. Well, that also makes a linear pair. So a linear pair makes 130. Okay? So plenty of ways to kind of figure that out. Yet another way um, potentially is, you know, vertical angles. A lot of times you can end up with vertical angles here. So if you know what one arc equals, you know what the central angle equals, and it's forming a vertical angle, you can work through that way. So uh, don't forget that you can combine um, all these other previous theorems you learned in other chapters if you see them form there. Okay? Um, and homework will, will really prepare you for this. You kind of see a lot of different, um, different ones, but mainly if you know that rule, inscribe is half the arc, central is exactly the arc, you're set to go. Okay, our last one says find the measure of arc AB. Now, if I knew this theorem already, congruent, uh, parallel lines, congruent arc theorem, I would know that arc AB is just always going to be congruent to the other arc that's in between the parallel lines. Just make sure you remember it's the ones between the parallel lines. So I know by that theorem, arc AB has to be 54 degrees. But let's talk about the Y. The Y is more important. Okay, if these are parallel lines, whether they're going through circles or not, Okay, we've done a lot with parallel lines in proofs in other chapters, with quadrilaterals, with triangles, etc. I can always form a transversal. Okay, and that transversal creates all kinds of congruent angles, corresponding angles, all anterior, all exterior, etc. If I do it that way and I kind of draw that transversal there, well, that rule says that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So that means the angle formed here by C A D has to be congruent to the angle formed by A D B. Okay? And this angle is an inscribed angle and is always half its arc. The arc it's formed is C D, so this angle has to be half that, 27 degrees. And if these are alternate interior angles, they're congruent. So this angle has to be 27 degrees. And it's an inscribed angle forming arc A B. And arcs of inscribed angles are twice the measure. So twice of 27 is 54 degrees. And so you can see how that relates directly to that theorem. Now, if you know the theorem, you can jump right to it. But it's better to know the proof and the kind of the process. That way, if you forget a theorem ever, you know how to work within that, you can get to these answers anyways. Okay? So hopefully that helps. Make sure you do your homework. Lots of practice on this. Um, this is kind of the, the first big, big portion of circles is knowing inscribed angles and central angles and how to solve for them. All right, thank you and good luck.